So here's a different amplifier for us. Um, this is an Audio Pax Model 88 valve amplifier, and uh, it's blown the main fuse. And you can see it on the desk there. It's uh, totally black. So it's not just that the fuse has died. You know, it's it's kind of gone catastrophic. Um, and so had some discussion with Audio Pax, and uh, the suggestion is it's probably the mains transformer. Uh, so we need to look at that. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just, uh, first of all, we'll just measure the DC resistance on the primary. You know, before we take this apart, we'll we'll just look at the mains uh, uh, input. We'll look at the DC resistance of that, and then I think I'm going to connect it to a variac, and we'll turn up the voltage slowly, and we'll look at the voltage and current that this the the, the current that this thing's drawn. I mean, there's no point of us keeping putting in fresh fuses just for them to blow. So we'll take that approach um, before we take it apart. Um, and then we'll open it up and see where we go once we're inside. So if we look at the uh, just the DC resistance across the mains input there, we're reading sort of 12, 13 ohms. Now I don't know if that's right or not, but it's obviously not a dead short. And it seems kind of reasonable. Um, this is obviously a DC measurement. You know, the impedance at 50 hertz. It's going to be higher than that. So there's, you know, there's not an obvious dead short on the primary of that mains transformer. Uh, so let's go and connect up the variac, and we'll look at the voltages and currents. All right. So we're connected up to a variac here, and I'm looking at the voltage on the orange DMM, and then the current draws on the blue one. Um, so we're reading just sort of millivolts uh, at the moment, but let's turn up the voltage a little bit and see how we go. And we can see that the current is rising even there. I've only got 14 volts and I've got 300 milliamps. Uh, so there's, a, there's clearly, you know, very heavy current draw in that. There we are. Let's see. Let's, let's use that as a base point there. So 40 volts in and we're drawing 700 milliamps. So it's quite obvious that when we, you know, have the full voltage, we're just going to pop that 3 amp fuse. There's something far wrong going on here. So with the valves removed, you know, we shouldn't really be drawing any current at all. Um, so it's either the mains transformer, as we suspect, or it could be something else on the secondary of that transformer that's causing that current draw. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll open it up now and the theory is we'll disconnect the secondary of the transformer and we'll do this voltage and current measurement again. And if we see the same sort of answers then we know that that transformer's uh, the, the problem and we have to replace that. So anyway, next step here, let's get the covers off and we'll see what's inside this thing. Here we are with the covers off then and it was easy enough. Um, there's just like 10 screws uh, around the outside and then it just lifted up off that main uh, plinth and we can see obviously valve amplifier we've got uh, transformers everywhere and then the main board up here and what I don't have schematics for this but I, I do have some instruction on what to look for and um, these uh, pair of wires here they are, these are the secondary from the main power transformer which is this guy here and it seems that the primary is uh, comes in tucked under here somewhere so I don't quite have access to that but I'm assuming for the moment that these are the only secondaries and the, the thinking is that we disconnect these and if we disconnect these then we can discount any kind of short on this uh, board here um, however before we start to just look at uh, the current draw again we'll just measure the 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 DC resistance of these windings see what that tells us so I know that this white wire here is the common and then we've got blue red and grey so if we just uh, go through them and see what they tell us so there's like 100 plus ohms seems reasonable and Again, same on that red one, seems reasonable again. Now I know that these should be, both of these should be 290 volt windings, so it's quite 
logical that they both read the same uh, DC resistance. And then this grey one is reading a bit low, 40 odd ohms. Now I know that that's 105 volts, so that's kind of logical. We're, we're going to have less uh, turns on that one. So the sort of ratio of the res resistances there look okay. So that adds up. However, what I see is that this is a symmetrical design. So I've got these uh, secondary windings here. Um, and then if we turn the unit over, I can see that we've got a, a mirror image here. I've got this green wire being the common and then the yellow, brown and black. Now I'm making an assumption that, that these should be the same. Uh, we'll see. So again, if we just measure the uh, DC resistance on these ones, so there's my common, and if I go to yellow, and it's reading like half an ohm. So that's either a low voltage winding, or there's some problem with that. Again, if I go to the next one, well that's reading higher there, you see, so we're up at 70 odd ohms there on the brown. And then on the black, 0.3. So I'm a bit suspicious that, you know, if this is meant to be symmetrical, then uh, these uh, resistances are obviously not right. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll disconnect all these wires and we'll maybe repeat that resistance measurement um, before we put the mains on again and try that current draw test. So just before I go and undo these wires and uh, make these measurements again, I just look at the solder joints that we start with here. They're absolutely disgusting. Uh, and the uh, same with the other the other connections there. They're really pretty grotty. And it's kind of, again, not what you expect in a, a unit uh, at this price point, really. All right. So I've disconnected these wires and we'll just check these resistance measurements again. Um, we know, you know that the resistance on the other side seemed quite sensible. So I won't bother doing it on that, but yeah. So with the wires disconnected from the board, uh, I'm still reading these very low uh, DC resistances. And uh, so that quite confidently tells us either either these are low voltage windings or the transformer is bust. And I'm, I'm inclined to think the transformer is bust. It would seem, given the, the sort of symmetrical look of this thing, that I should expect to see the same on both sides here. So I'll go and disconnect the other wires and then we'll just do that uh, AC current draw measurement again before we draw a final conclusion. I do see that there's there are some other uh, secondary windings coming up here, um, but I think these are just heater windings for the valve. Um, so there's there's kind of no circuitry involved in that. They they'll just go directly to the valve. Um, so I don't really see the need to disconnect these at this time. All right. So here we are again. I've I've disconnected these wires both um, both sides now, and they're just floating. So there's there's no connection there whatsoever, and let's just turn up the the voltage again, and I can see right away you know we're still pulling current. So I think we're pretty pretty certain then that this uh, transformer's dead. There we there's our there's our 40 volt reference that we used before, and we're drawing uh, 700 milliamps. We should be drawing a few tens of milliamps, just enough to magnetise that transformer. Um, so obviously something wrong. Very suspicious that secondary winding there has gone short. So I went back and read through the email exchange that I've got so far. And what comes to light is that uh, this is the main transformer as we've discussed. This here is the heater transformer. And... It also seems to supply this board here, um, and this is just a, a turn-on delay. Maybe maybe detects the AC as well. I don't know quite sure. 
there seems to be an awful lot of parts on it just for a turn on delay. Um, but there's a relay on this board and that relay energises this transformer. So given that we see the current draw right away when we apply even a low voltage, this transformer's not in circuit at that point in time. This relay has never been energised. And so then suspicion falls back to the second transformer. So I need to look at the, the wiring of that and we'll find out I need to find out where the primary of that is and then we'll disconnect this transformer and see what effect that has. Uh, and I think I'm going to have to take that transformer out to do this. I can't really get any access to the wires. Don't know where they go. As I say, I've no diagram which makes life difficult. But uh, we'll figure it out. So we'll take that transformer out and we'll maybe look at disconnecting some of the windings of that and see what happens. So here we are with this uh, transformer just removed so we can see the wiring and it came away easy enough, you know, the, the screws weren't even particularly tight. Um, so what we're looking at here on this side here, this uh, appears to be the primary and then we've got several windings on the secondary there, I think I can see at least three. Um, one of them comes to power this board, so that's maybe like a, I don't know, 5 volts, 9 volts, something on that. And then there's uh, a green pair and a yellow pair that go down to the main board. I think that's obviously the heaters. And there's two greys and a black, or two blacks and a grey, I can't quite see. But they go to a common point on the main board. So I don't know if that's like a centre tap for some of this stuff. Primary here, and we see four wires. The green one goes to a common point on the rear panel, that's just, I think that's just a, a shielding ground for the chassis of that transformer. Um, so it goes to a point in the rear panel which actually isn't tight, so that's kind of floating around there. The brown wire there, a, that's floating around as well, so I don't know if that's just a, a, a tap on that transformer that's not been used. It, it's, it's, there's some heat shrink on the end, so that's sensible enough. And then, so we're just left with a uh, red and black, which would would suspect that's the primary of this, and that comes up and goes along this wire harness here to some kind of who knows what's happening under this uh, heat shrink here. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that piece of heat shrink off, and we'll disconnect what we believe is the primary of this, and see if that then. Uh, takes away the, the uh, current draw problem. Um, once we confirm that, we'll disconnect the secondaries one at a time and then we can determine whether it's, uh, a, again, whether it's the actual transformer or whether it's something the transformer is connected to. Um, so, let's take this uh, piece of heat shrink apart and we'll disconnect the primary first. Alright, so we opened up this uh, heat shrink package here and we see that uh, there's a, th a through wire from the live goes to this relay board and then this other red connection went to this heater transformer. And when we, uh, if I just measure the DC resistance of the mains uh, connection again uh, and I go on to the sort of darker red here that goes to this relay board we find that that drops down to the sort of well, it's about 15 odd ohms now, because obviously we've not got the other transformer in parallel. So that's still reading. Uh, and then if we check the heater transformer, that's reading about 44 ohms in the primary. And we do expect that to be higher because it's a lower power transformer. But why then are we reading? Why then are we reading 12 volts, or sorry, 12 ohms, 12, 15 ohms on that uh, uh, this point here, because this this relay board should isolate this transformer. It doesn't appear to be doing that, um, unless it's got a different function, unless it's got a kind of protect function or, or the like. But if we measure uh, the the live through this uh, board here through the relay, it's a dead short. So in fact, even at initial power on uh, power is being applied to this transformer. That's not what my understanding was. So I think the next thing, I'm going to take that board out and uh, we'll, we'll just look at the connections to the relay and see if there's potentially something wrong there. 
um, or else just my understanding of what this board does is not correct. So that's, we'll take that out, see what we find. Alright, so we removed this board and it was easy enough again, the, the, the screws just fell out, you know, they weren't tight at all. Um, but all becomes clear when we, we look at this board, we've been somewhat led astray here. And what we saw just a second or two ago was that this board was a, a through path to the, to the live when there was no power applied. And we can see there in the meter now that it's actually an open circuit. And so what's happened here is we've got a, a, f a pretty low power relay here. And when this transformer has blown, it's not only taken out the fuse, but it's welded the contacts of that relay closed. So then when we've come along and looked at, looked at this unit, it looks like, or in fact, it, 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 it is the case that this transformer is powered a, without the delay of this board etc. Uh, so what I did is I applied uh, some power a few times to the relay coil and we can see now that uh, it, it goes short when we apply power and goes open when we take the power away. So that all makes sense now, that function makes sense. Um, uh, now I think we, we obviously need to replace that relay also uh, if the contacts have had a hard time there's no point in leaving that in there. So. We'll do that, uh, uh, um, but fundamentally we're back to the same same conclusion, this transformer is dead and so we need to go and talk to audio packs and get some specs for that and uh, see how we're going to go about getting a replacement for that. Alright, so we put all this stuff back together, the transformer and this relay board. The relay board will come out later when we replace that relay. Um, but now when we measure the uh, just the uh, m the mains DC resistance there, we're up in the mega ohms, so it's a complete open circuit. So the only thing that would be in circuit is that heater transformer, which looks to be reading quite sensible. So just before we put this one aside, um, what we'll do is we'll apply mains to this input here, which should energise this transformer and then there should be a delay before this relay board kicks. And if all that is functional then we can be sort of double confident that this transformer is OK. So let's do that, we'll just power that up. Um, and I can hear it buzzing, I've, I've turned the power on there. And uh, I can hear it buzzing away so that's a good sign. And if we wait long enough we'll hear a click on that relay and then we should be able to check the so it's reading an open circuit there, let's just wait for the click takes about 30 seconds there we go and we're down at 0.4 ohms so that's all working, quite happy with that, really good um, so then we just need to put this one aside source a transformer and uh, pick up in part 2